The college football season is back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the season premiere of This Week in CA Football. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Rob Washburn. Great to have you back with us this season. It was a great start for the league in non-conference play as Villanova went on the road to knock off nationally ranked Colgate in front of a national television audience to kick things off this past Saturday, Rob. Yeah, what an all-around great performance from Villanova to go on the road and post a 20-point victory over a Colgate squad that advanced to the quarterfinals of the FCS playoffs a year ago. Campbell transfer quarterback Danny Smith was sensational in his Villanova debut, passing for 205 yards and three touchdowns and adding another TD on the ground. The Wildcats rushed for 239 yards with Justin Covington tallying a career-high 134 yards on only 19 carries and Jalen Jackson adding another 64. Villanova's defense pitched a shutout for the first two and a half quarters and also limited the Raiders to 288 total yards. Cornerback Jaquan Amos led the way with six tackles, a fumble recovery, and a 27-yard interception return for a touchdown that gave Nova a 14-0 lead. It was certainly a statement win for a Villanova program that has battled a lot of injuries over the past two seasons. Congratulations once again to the Wildcats. We'll see if they can carry that momentum during their open week. But it's time now to get a look at week one action around CA football with four contests to kick off on Thursday night at 7. Highlighted by two teams that reached the postseason last year and will be showcased on the league's new digital partner, FlowFootball.com. We begin in Newark as Delaware and their newly renovated stadium will play host to Delaware State. Yeah, it's going to be great to see the changes that are underway at Delaware Stadium. And there's no better way to kick off the season than a game against your in-state rival. Bible. Pat Kehoe is back for year two as the Blue Hens starting quarterback after passing for over 2,000 yards a year ago. UD's rushing attack should be strong as returnee John Lee is joined by Penn State transfer Andre Robinson and ODU transfer Will Knight. They will run behind a big and experienced offensive line. Now the Blue Hens will have a number of new starters at linebacker and in the secondary, but the defensive line has a chance to be dominant behind returnees Cam Kitchen and Caleb Ashworth. Now, Delaware State's coming off a 2-9 and nine season a year ago, and the Blue Hens have never lost to the Hornets in eight previous meetings. The other contest at 7 on FlowFootball.com will be Stony Brook as they begin the season at home to take on Bryant. Yeah, Stony Brook's coming off back-to-back -back FCS playoff appearances and hopes to continue its success at home, where they were 5-0 and last season. The Seawolves will feature a bunch of new faces on offense as junior Tyquel Fields takes over as the starting quarterback after backing up Joe Carbone for the past couple of years. The Long Island Express is also gone in the backfield, but Stony Brook has moved senior Isaiah White from defense back to offense, where he rushed for 240. 43 yards as a freshman. Now, the Seawolves defense has been dominant over the last several seasons, and that should continue in 2019 as eight starters are back. Wrecking ball Sam Kamara anchors the defensive line, and Stony Brook has a pair of all CA players in the secondary with Gavin Heslip and TJ Morrison. Now, Bryant returns 19 starters from last season and is picked to finish fifth in the NEC. The two teams met a year ago, and Stony Brook pulled away in the second half for a 50 to 21 mm -hmm. victory. Over on Masson, the Spiders will have their home opener as they welcome Jacksonville to Robbins Stadium. Yeah, last season certainly didn't go well for Richmond, and there's no question they're ready to get back on the field and begin to erase those memories. Junior Joe Mancuso earned the starting quarterback job, and he provides a threat with both his arm and his legs after leading the team in rushing a year ago. The return of Xavier Goodall and a full season of redshirt freshman Aaron Dykes should bolster the rushing attack, and the Spiders are excited about the potential of transfer wide receivers Charlie Fessler and Keaston Fuller. Now, Richmond's defense played better in the second half of last season, and eight starters are back. The Spiders are especially tough up front with defensive tackle Colby Ritten and CAA preseason defensive player of the year Maurice Jackson rushing from the outside. Jacksonville was just 2-8 and eight last season, but they'll provide a challenge with their triple option offense. Quarterback Calvin Turner Jr. ran for 1,431 yards a year ago. And the fourth game on Thursday night is the league's first FBS matchup as UAlbany travels to take on Central Michigan out of the MAC on ESPN3. Yeah, much like Richmond, UAlbany is a team that suffered some difficult losses last year and is anxious to get things turned around. The Great Danes will turn to redshirt freshman Jeff Undercuffler at quarterback after he started the final three games last year. Now, UAlbany has plenty of weapons at the skill positions with versatile running back Carl Mofor and a deep group of receivers led by Dev Holmes and Jarrah Reeves. Defensively, eight starters are back from a unit that held two of their final three opponents to under 300 total yards. UAlbany is led by linebackers Levi Matheny and Danny D'Amico, who rank first and second on the team in tackles. Central Michigan has 12 starters back from a team that was just 1-11 last season. Most of that experience is from a defense that gave up just 22 points per game. Offensively, they returned running back Jonathan Ward. 
The lone contest on Friday night at 6 on flowfootball.com will feature the defending CA champions Maine as they will have their home opener against Sacred Heart. Yeah, it should be an electric atmosphere mm-hmm. at Alphonse Stadium as Maine is back at home for the first time since that impressive run to the semifinals of the FCF playoffs. The Black Bears have the potential to repeat as CA champs as Chris Ferguson is back for his third year as the team's starting quarterback. He has most of his top receivers back, led by senior speedster Ernest Edwards, and Maine is counting on Buffalo transfer Emmanuel Reed to have a big year at running back. The Black Hole defense was one of the best in FCS last season, and eight starters are back. Four of them earned all CA honors with lineman Kayon Whitaker and Charles Mitchell, linebacker Deshaun Stevens, and All America cornerback Manny Patterson. Now, they'll face a Sacred Heart team that tied for the NEC regular season title a year ago. The Pioneers ran for 241 yards a game behind featured running backs Jordan Meacham and Julius Chestnut, and defensively, all but one starter is back. Five CA football teams will take the field for the first time this Saturday, beginning in Morgantown at 2 o'clock, as the Jamie Dukes will go on the road to take on West Virginia out of the Big 12. Yeah, this is a great matchup between two programs that had a lot of success over the years and feature passionate fan bases. There are so many storylines as Kirk Sinetti coaches his first game at JMU against his alma mater at a place where his father was also the head coach. Offensively for JMU, Ben DiNucci returns as the Duke's starting quarterback, and he has a pair of familiar targets to throw to with Kendall Dean and Jake Brown. JMU is committed to running the ball behind an experienced offensive line and look for Percy Ajay Obese and Juwan Hamilton to share that load. Now, 10 starters are back on a JMU defense that ranked 6th in FCS in points and yards allowed last season. Rondell Carter and John Daka anchor the defensive line in front of leading tackler Dimitri Holloway. The secondary is very experienced in the return of All-America cornerback Rashad Robinson. West Virginia will be playing its first game under head coach Neil Brown. The Mountaineers will be guided offensively by Oklahoma transfer quarterback Austin Kendall, and they have a dynamic running back in Kennedy McCoy. Mm-hmm. Also at 2 on ESPN+, Plus, it will be Rhode Island hitting the road to take on their FBS opponent, Ohio Bobcats, out of the MAC. Yeah, Rhode Island's coming off its first winning season since mm-hmm. 2001, and the Rams would like to build on that momentum. Rhode Island's still deciding between returnee Vito Priori and redshirt freshman Darius Perantes at quarterback, but whoever wins that job will be surrounded by playmakers. Mm-hmm. Wide receivers Aaron Parker and Isaiah Coulter combined for over 100 catches in 13 TDs last season, and running backs Zoe Bryant and Naeem Jones combined for nearly 900 yards on the ground. Now the Rams have seven starters back on defense and feature experience on each level. Brandon Gennetti is the veteran up front, leading tackler Brandon Javier Casillo is back at linebacker, and Mamadou Mbai anchors the secondary. Now, Ohio was the unanimous choice to capture the Mid-American East Division as they returned many of their top players from a nine-win squad a year ago. The offense is led by all-conference quarterback Nathan Rourke, who threw for 2,400 yards and 23 TDs last year. Kicking off at three, it will be the Towson Tigers as they travel to the Low Country to take on the Citadel on ESPN+. Yeah, Towson returned to the playoffs for the first time since 2013, but their goals are much higher this season. The Tigers piled up 608 yards of offense in a 44-27 victory over the Citadel last year, and they returned most of their top playmakers offensively. All-America quarterback Tom Flacco threw for 253 yards and ran for another 185 yards in last year's victory, so you know he's going to be the focus of the Citadel defense. However, the Tigers also feature running back Shane Simpson and top receiver Shane Leatherberry and Jabari Allen. The Tigers' defense surrendered 341 rushing yards against Citadel's triple option attack, but seven starters return, and they should have a better idea this season on how to slow that down. Linebackers Robert Hayward and Keon Pei are the leaders of that Towson unit. The Citadel has 17 starters back, including 10 on that offense. Over on ESPN3 at 6 o'clock, Coach Trishiani will make his head coaching debut for Elon as the Phoenix travel to North Carolina A&T. Yeah, this is one of the marquee games in all of FCS football mm-hmm. this week as it matches a pair of nationally ranked teams with high expectations. The two schools are also less than 30 minutes apart, so many of the players already know each other. Elon has seven starters back on offense, but the key will be quarterback Davis Cheek, who returns to action after suffering that knee injury at midseason last year. He's got a lot of familiar faces around him with running backs Jalen Thomas and Sean McNair, who combined for over 1,000 yards on the ground last year, and top receivers Cortez Weeks and Cole Taylor. The Phoenix also have seven starters returning defensively. The line is strong with Marcus Willoughby and Tristan Cox, and Elon features two of the CA's top cornerbacks in Greg Leagues Jr. and Daniel Reed Bennett. North Carolina A&T is the defending MEAC champion and the preseason favorite, but they have to replace seven starters on both offense Mm -hmm. and defense. 
Also making his coaching debut at 6 o'clock will be William & Mary's Mike London as a Tribe welcome Lafayette to Zabel Stadium on flowfootball.com. Yeah, a lot of anticipation as William mm-hmm. & Mary opens its season at home for the first time since 2007. The Tribe will unveil its new fast-paced go-go offense with either Coastal Carolina transfer Kilton Anderson or true freshman Hollis Mathis at quarterback. Returnees Albert Funderburk and Owen Wright are expected to share carries at running back, and there will be plenty of new faces at wide receiver. Now, defense will be a strength for the Tribe with eight starters back. Bill Murray should thrive as a defensive end in the new 3-4 scheme, and William & Mary has a pair of all-conference performers in the secondary with Isaiah Laster and Corey Parker. Lafayette has 15 starters back from last season, including four all-conference players. As always, folks, casports.com backslash live scores is your source for live scoring and in-game live stats throughout the first week of the college football season. And, of course, you can continue to follow the leg on our many social media platforms, such as facebook.com backslash cafootball and Twitter at cafootball using the hashtag CAFB. A lot of great matchups this week. Enjoy the games, everyone. We'll see you right here next week.